Hello, I'm Felipe Soriano. I'm a network solution architect with experience in designing wire and wireless network architectures for different vertical industries. For this session, I will bring my design and fine tune expertise to the Teller Wireless LAN deployment solutions. I will start this session by concentrating on the fine tuning framework for the Stellar Wireless architecture to provide the best quality of connectivity experience, or also known as QoE for users and devices connected to the Stellar Wireless network. We understand that there are many Wi Fi parameters that can be adjusted or simply left as default so they can operate according to the standard thresholds. The purpose of this session is to address specific parameters that are recommended to be fine-tuned based on the applications and the device requirements. For example, provision capacity and airtime fairness parameters for newer devices supporting the latest 802.11 standards. These newer devices should be able to take advantage of the advanced features of the wireless infrastructure supported through the new standards in a fair manner and for the Stellar Wireless Network to still be able to be backwards compatible to handle the legacy devices. We will address the best fine-tuning recommendations for the enabling and disabling of roaming options, such as Layer 2 versus Layer 3 roaming for voice and multimedia applications over Wi-Fi, since these recommended adjustments have been verified, tested, and documented in the voice over wireless design guidelines written by my peer Olivier who will be presenting his own session with this information. I will also address the RF adjustments and recommendations to handle a mixture of 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz devices encompassing both new and legacy devices supporting wireless IEEE 802.11ax AC and versus the legacy 11N BG and so on. We will provide a brief uh, introduction to the OmniVista Series 10.x, internally known as OmniVista Series Next Generation, that is in development to leverage artificial intelligence for end-to-end -end wire and wireless QE analytics and management. What we learned through this session can be leveraged to help fine-tune the Wi-Fi parameters to help maintain the best wireless user experience. In a matter of speaking, this experience can help the OmniVista Series Standard X train and develop its capabilities through its cloud analytics engine to dynamically and automatically provision those fine-tuning parameters to deliver the best quality of connectivity experience that includes secure mobility, excellent performance, on top of a fine-tuned and well-architected Stellar Wireless network. The guidelines I will be presenting are not replacements for other published documentation such as the Stellar Configuration Guide or the Voice Over Wireless LAN Deployment Guidelines, etc. Use these fine-tuning recommendations to help deliver the best quality of user experience for your wireless network. The purpose of this session is not to provide an end-to-end -end design and deployment scenario guide. I will concentrate on the fine-tuning portion of key Stellar wireless parameters to help provide the quality of connectivity experience for devices connected to the wireless network. To further explain, the quality of experience encompasses many connectivity factors from successful connectivity attempts to time to connect, to roaming, to capacity availability, band steering, and airtime fairness, plus other key attributes which help influence the quality of the user experience while securely connecting and roaming on the wireless network. Through this session, I will provide guidelines for fine-tuning the Wi-Fi network by understanding the Stellar Wireless configurable parameters, for example, capacity and airtime fairness related parameters, especially when mixing legacy and newer Wi-Fi devices in the same network. In this section, I'll be addressing the capacity the smart load balancing and RF fine-tuning parameters for Stellar Wireless. Competitors' recommendations point to two main Wi-Fi design guidelines to offer coverage with less access points deployed versus capacity with more APs deployed to handle the larger client connectivity for throughput capabilities instead of simply connectivity for coverage purposes. ALE recommends the capacity design 
for the higher density of APs to provide the optimal performance. However, radio management needs to be at the forefront to help with the channel interference when APs are closer to each other. To avoid mutual interference with adjacent APs, ACS, Auto Channel Selection, can be used to make the AP check and select the best channel under the radio environment automatically. For 5 GHz radio deployments, the Radio Dynamic Adjustment Technology, sometimes referred in the documentation as, as RDA, installer can be used to define a channel list to make the AP select the channels from that specified list. By default, the working channel and transmitting power are automatically managed by the Radio Dynamic Adjustment Technology, which can specify a channel list and a power range applicable for auto selection, which can reduce the risk of low power transmitting or channel conflicts. The RDA relies on the background scanning feature. To ensure RDA is effective, make sure the background is enabled. As I explain other fine-tuning recommendations, you will see that the background scanning technology is used in multiple functions to examine the radio frequency environment in which the wireless network is operating, discovering neighboring APs, and identifying the interference and also attacks. Background scanning is the basis of some advanced features such as the wireless IDS IPS and the radio dynamic adjustment technology, which in turn leverages the auto channel selection and auto power control mechanisms. The ACS is recommended for the AP to check and select the best channel for the client communications. And the APC checks and selects the best power settings so they don't interfere with other APs, especially for this recommended capacity design where more APs have overlapping coverage and they must control and keep its signal to noise ratio at lower levels. I used a third-party capacity planning tool to illustrate an extreme wire wireless SSID overhead case where operating on the same channel. This table comes from the Revolution Wi-Fi Capacity Planner tool with predictive results based on the data you feed into it. For example, 40% of the clients defined for this model are operating based on the 802.11ac standard and the other 60% are a mixture of legacy 11n, 11g devices. This table illustrates the number of SSIDs as to the number of access points operating on the, on the same channel. As you can see from these results, as one increases the number of SSIDs, it contributes to the Wi-Fi network overhead based on the added beacons and pro response frames. Again, this is just an extreme case where no competent engineer would design the WLAN in this manner, but I'm making this point to illustrate the overhead cost when the congested channel is selected when the load balancing parameters are disabled. The percentage figure shown in this table is the airtime overhead cost by the number of SSIDs enabled in the Wi-Fi environment. To determine what the actual client serving airtime is, the overhead is subtracted from the available airtime that can be used by the clients to transmit and receive data. For example, based on this analysis, if one configures 10 SSIDs on 12 APs operate on the same channel, this will consume 50% of the available airtime. The obvious key point here is that all APs are on the same channel. This is where the auto channel selection and auto power control function in Stellar come into light to help distribute this overhead beacons and probe response frames into multiple non-interfering channels. This is a great reason to keep the dynamic radio adjustment technology enabled as discussed in the previous slide. I also did the analysis for 2.4 GHz bands and the results are much worse. I started seeing over 50% overhead for just three SSIDs for APs on the same channel. The point I'm trying to make is to be careful and don't go overboard in trying to fine tune certain parameters. Your Wi-Fi environment will be better served when enabling most of its auto functionality to better load balance. In the speaker notes for this handout presentation, I included a couple of reference URLs to review regarding this Wi-Fi Revolution tool. The principle of this 
load balance functionalities to provide fair distribution of clients among neighboring APs. This can be based on the client density, channel utilization on adjacent APs, and associating clients and their RSSI value. This functionality steers client association from a busy AP to a less congested AP. The threshold for device density is 10 and measurement of channel utilization of 70% for both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands. By default, load balance is enabled. Load balance function includes configurable parameters at the RF profile level by guiding client devices to connect to the most suitable AP, the most suitable band and uncongested channels, or denying access to APs based on weak RSSI signals. Some of the key features under this session include band steering, force 5G, and airtime fairness. I'll be addressing most of this fine tuning options to enable smart load balances through some of these configurable parameters in the next several slides. The band steering functionality controls the behavior of dual band clients based on the utilization of wireless channel and devices connected to the AP. The band steering helps Wi Fi devices to be associated on a better radio band, which is based on the RSSI strength to the radio bands and the RF utilization on each channel. It also determines the number of devices on both radio bands and calculates the difference of those devices on each of the bands. The band steering functions are handled during the pre-association phase. If band steering is enabled and you want to certain clients to be excluded from this functionality, this is when the administrator has the option to exclude those devices via the MAC or UI exclusion list. The exclusion list is recommended for those legacy and latency sensitive clients such as IP-based scanners that are not as feature or performance flexible as the newer devices. Following the same logic, if an organization has the capabilities to restrict the usage and only allow newer devices, then the band steering function can be ignored and the forced 5G can be enabled to direct all 5G capable devices to operate on that band since it's more likely to be less congested. Moving on to the airtime fairness attribute. This is disabled by default. This fairness functionality is applied to both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands when, when it's enabled. It provides equal time slice access to all wireless clients from new 802.11ax, 11AC to legacy 11N, A, B, G. This feature prevents the client from monopolizing the resources. This parameter is recommended to be enabled so the newer devices can take advantage of this fairness since all types of devices have equal airtime and since the newer faster device can take advantage of that airtime to send and receive more frames than the legacy device that may introduce their own latencies based on their supported older standards and lower speed processors or memory restrictions. Now let's discuss smart load balancing via the association and roaming receive signal strength indicator or simply known as RSSI. The association RSSI threshold parameters used to set thresholds at the RF profile level for optimizing connectivity when associating with an access point by denying client access with a weak signal. Clients with a signal strength value lower than the association threshold will not be allowed to associate with the access point. By default, this parameter is disabled. These thresholds are applied to 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz bands separately for newer 802.11ax and .11ac capable devices. The association parameters can be set per SSID basis through the minimum client data rate and the minimum management rate settings for both bands. Since those settings interwork work with each other, the minimum client data rate values need to be equal or higher than the management rates so the roaming algorithms can be triggered. The roaming management rates will be discussed later in this slide. Before I get into more details about this RSSI threshold for association and roaming, allow me to clarify how Stellar Wireless RSSI values are converted to decibel measurements. 
this RSSI recommendations can be converted to decibels in relation to a milliwatt or also refer as DVMs based on the base noise floor measurements. The calculation to convert from the RSSI value is in the range from 0 through 99 supported in stellar wireless. For example, to calculate the desired signal strength of, for our voice over IP and video streaming application, we can use 31 as the RSS value, then we subtract it from minus 96 dBm, which is the base noise floor measurement for this calculation to obtain a desired value of minus 65 dBms to support the voice over IP and streaming video applications for a very good signal strength converted to decibels to a milliwatt representation. This fine tuning recommendation parameters help with issues related to time to connect and unsuccessful connectivity attempts and the overall QE for a positive connectivity experience. Therefore, the recommended minimum association RSSI threshold setting is 22 for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands. This threshold allows clients to associate to the access port at a minimum signal strength of minus 74 dBm. If one chooses to use the minimum client data rate controller parameters for device association controls, then it must be enabled at the SSID configuration level through the minimum client data rates parameters for each of the bands. For example, for the 2.4 GHz band, the recommended minimum client data rate is 12 megabits. When the client's data speed is lower than that rate, the client will be denied association to that SSID. A similar process happens to 5 GHz clients. The recommended minimum associated data rate is 24 megabits. The Stellar Wireless Access Point supports fast roaming functionality via 802.11R and with support from 802.11K and 802.11V standards to help to provide better roaming decisions. These are better mechanisms than the roaming RSSI thresholds. However, for this standards-based functionality to work end-to-end, -end, the client side needs to support those supplemental standards. I will discuss these options further in a separate section when addressing the sticky client issue. But first, let's address the roaming RSSI threshold recommendations based on the RSSI values in the same manner as discussed for the association mechanism. When the client's RSSI value is lower than the threshold value, that client will be guided to roam to another access point with a stronger signal. By default, the roaming RSSI is disabled with a value of zero. This functionality is applied to the 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz band separately. These roaming decisions can be best enabled for coverage-based network designs since there will be less access points deployed with weaker signals at the cover edges. However, for ALE's best design practices, we recommend the capacitor-based design with a higher access point density to eliminate most weak signals between access points. For this scenario, minimal fine-tuning of these thresholds is required. However, for the legacy devices that still need the system control, then the roaming RSSI threshold is reckoned to be set at 25 for both bands using the RSSI to decibels to milliwatt conversion. The roaming trigger will be at minus 71 dBm for clients to roam to another access point that provides a stronger signal. The minimum management rate parameter can also be helped with roaming decision when working with, a, with or without the 802.11k and that 11v standards. These parameters are recommended to be enabled. The administrator can set the minimum management rate for each of the bands. The higher the rate value means less coverage. The lower rate value means larger coverage. For the roaming minimum management rates, we're also recommending 12 megabits for 2.4 gigahertz and 24 megabits for 5 gigahertz bands. The following is worth repeating. The association minimum client data rate settings need to be equal or higher than the minimum management rate. These configuration options can be set at the SSID configuration level. The background scan is under the umbrella of smart load balancing features and is enablement basis for some advanced features such as the radio dynamic adjustment RDA technology, the auto channel selection 
and auto power controlled, and among other functionality may require to be adjusted to present the best quality of connectivity experience. When background scanning is turned off, the rogue AP detection suppression will stop and the RDA adjustment technology will drop its precision. By default, background scanning is enabled and it's recommended to stay that way. For the RF fine tuning purposes, let's look at the radial dynamic adjustment technology and how Stellar Wireless Architecture implements it. RDA technology adjusts the radio working channel and transmitting power according to the wireless environment around it. It includes ACS and APC functions. RDA is enabled by default. The scanning interval of background scanning can be configured from 5 seconds to 3 hours. For highly sensitive packet delay use cases, it is recommended to increase the setting to 20 seconds. Keep in mind that an interval longer than 60 seconds loses NA accuracy and it affects the, the wireless intrusion protection functionality. It is recommended to keep it under 40 seconds. The radio dynamic adjustment technology is also controlling adjacent APs so they can use different radio channels to prevent interference. APs within range of each other should always be set to non-interfering channels to maximize the capacity and performance. This is where the auto channel selection setting can be used to make the AP check and select the best channel under its radio environment automatically. The algorithm will help the AP find the channel with the least overhead. I know I described the band serial and force 5G variables previously, but here's where these features work together to reduce the co channel interference and increase the available bandwidth for the connected devices. As an administrator, there are several temptations to try to fine-tune some of the power settings, the channel width, the minimum and maximum transmit power, etc. However, based on the standard algorithms employed by the distributed radio management or as referenced in the configuration options as the DRM, we recommend to keep these settings on auto. The default settings button on top of the screen is it's a little confusing where the factor default is set to off. And since the other buttons are set to auto, the first glance this appears to be the best setting. If left off as a factor default, that means those parameters remain configurable. However, if one chooses to turn on the default settings button, then the conversion option in this section are disabled. This is where it became confusing to me, but after switching the button on and off, it became clear that it should be turned on. To let the Stellar algorithm set its radio power settings automatically based on their airspace environment, especially when there's a mixture of, of AP models with different radio ca capacities. Another big temptation to, is to attempt to increase the channel bandwidth performance over 5 gigahertz channels by widening them. We recommend to resist this temptation pitfall because of the following reasons. This information comes directly from the ECHOHOW blog, both standards 802.11ac and 11ax allow for 80 MHz and 160 wide channels. For those of you who are not familiar with the widening of channels options, here are a couple of review points that provides an overview about bonding channels. For example, let's take channels 36 and 40, uh, 20 MHz each, and bind them to make a 40 MHz channel 38. Or, or even use two 40 MHz channels to widen them to 80 MHz, such as using channels 38 and 46 to make the 80 MHz channel 42, etc., up to 160 MHz channel options. This wide channel implementation sounds good for better throughput. However, as, as also detailed in the ECHOHOW blog, this implementation introduces the core channel interference, plus it also adds an extra 3 dB of noise to the channel. This doubles the noise in this scenario. It introduces more noise, but no gain in, in the signal. This equates to a lower signal to noise ratio, which forces a lower modulation coding scheme rate, which decreases the throughput. This means that clients will take longer to transmit, driving up airtime utilization. To avoid this possible pitfalls, keep the dynamic radio enabled for the Stellar APs and let its algorithm return the best channel and transmitting power to enable 
to automatically fine-tune itself. This is where the collected analytics data in crunching to information into the future implementation of Omnivista Series 10.x will help the Stellar Wi-Fi network to automatically fine-tune itself to maintain the best QoE. I will introduce you to this new cloud-based NMS tool later in this presentation. Please refer to the speaker notes for the Ekaha blog reference link if you want to read more about this topic. Now let's talk about roaming, both from layer 2 to layer 3 uh, capabilities. There are two options to handle device roaming more efficiently. For example, one is through the roaming RSSI threshold, which sets thresholds to deny clients access to access points with weak wireless signals. Clients with an RSSI value lower than the roaming RSSI threshold value will be guided to roam to, a, to another AP with the better transmission signal. By default, roaming RSSI is disabled, set at zero, but the roaming RSSI can be applied to 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands separately. The roaming RSSI variables are used in conjunction with the supplementary standards 802.11k and 802.11v. Clients that support those standards will be informed to which AP to roam when the threshold is reached. I will address this standard later when I discuss a solution to avoid the sticky client problem. Layer 2 ROM is recommended to always be enabled. However, I have a different philosophy for Layer 3 roaming. The Layer 3 roaming attribute is used to enable or disable the Layer 3 roaming functionality. It is disabled by default. The functionality of Layer 3 roaming is that it allows clients to move between APs with access to other subnets and VLANs. We recommend for this parameter to remain disabled. If layer 3 access is required for the Wi-Fi client, then it should be routed through the wire side of the network for better control via policies and ACLs through the higher performing layer 3 switches. Some of you may be asking what does forwarding database update on association attribute have to do with roaming? Well, when a client roams to a new AP, when this attribute is enabled, the new associated AP will send our packets to the uplink switch to notify the switch to change the downstream forwarding port for the wireless client and traffic. Therefore, to keep the client's location and network path updated for troubleshooting and location-based purposes, this parameter should be enabled. The opportunistic key caching, or OKC, it's a it's also related to roaming. When applied, when enabled, it triggers a cache pairwise primary key to be used when the client roams to a new AP. This also helps with the sticky client avoidance functionality that I will discuss in the next slide. If re-authentication happened every time a client roamed, it would defeat the purpose of device mobility while using the wireless environment. This OKC Functionality allows for faster roaming of clients without the need for a complete 802.1x authentication. The sticky client issue happens when a Wi-Fi client doesn't roam. Those clients tend to hang on to the original access point they associated with rather than moving to a nearby AP that has a much better and stronger signal strength. Typical client roaming happens when the client monitor indicators of the health of their wireless connections such as the RSSI signal strength, their signal to noise ratio, and the number of error retries they are experiencing on the connection. Once these indicators start to degrade, they must start to probe for alternate access points. The 802.11k and 802.11v attributes are disabled by default. The 11k standard enables APs and clients to dynamically measure the available radio resources. When 802.11k is enabled, APs and clients send neighbor reports, beacon reports, and link measurement reports to each other. The 11v standard defines mechanisms for wireless network management enhancements and BSS transition management. It allows client devices to exchange information about the network topology and the RF environment. It is recommended for these controls to always be enabled. They include a range of mechanisms for performing the various measurements of the Wi-Fi environment. For example, the 11K controls allow a client to request information about the environment. 
One of the most useful mechanisms from the client's roaming perspective is the naval report. A naval report is requested by the client which contains a list of the APs that its current AP knows about. Since the end device has this information, it improves the ability to make the roaming decision. The use of 11K functionality is dependent on the client support for this standard. The 11V defines a service that allows stations and wireless devices to exchange data that provides them with awareness of the network conditions. One of these mechanisms provided in 11V is the VSS transition management. This mechanism allows an access point to request that a client roam to a specific AP or it provides a set of preferred APs. This mechanism provides the client with better data to improve its roaming decisions. Some of you may be asking for what application would these controls stay disabled. In today's environments, a larger percentage of Wi-Fi devices support these standards and they are best served when these controls are enabled. However, for those legacy devices that don't support these standards, they will have to rely on the roaming RSSI threshold settings at the RF profile level for roaming decisions from the AP side. Now we get into the voice and multimedia controls for better QoE. The key settings for the voice and video awareness are at the RF profile level by enabling band steering and 5G airtime fairness. These are the basic re prerequisites to guarantee QoE for these types of applications. The other prerequisites are background scanning and voice video awareness buttons, which are already enabled by default. Make certain that scanning duration is configured for 110 milliseconds. If you need further clarifications, configuration options, please reference the Voice over wireless LAN design guide. The latest version is release 7.2. Under the same configuration parameters on the RF profile level, go down to the per band info and turn off the client aware buttons. But leave the auto channel selection and auto power control settings on auto for the system to automatically select the best channels and power settings. Turn on the channel dynamic radio management for 5G and enable the 5G channel list. Select all eight channels for the 5G low and once again leave the channel width and power settings on auto both for both options. And then select 11 channels to have sufficient isolation between them for the 5G high option. Change the channel width from auto to 20 megahertz but leave the power settings on auto. Also enter the maximum transmit power to 7 dBm for the 2.4G radio and 15 dBm for the 5G radios. Leave the other settings as factor defaults, including the multi-MIMO setting that's already enabled by default. If you require further explanation as to the specific settings for, for this voiceover wireless LAN applications, please reference the latest version 7.2 of the Voice Over Wireless LAN Design Guide. Throughout this presentation, I have referenced OmniVista Series 10.x that is currently in development to help with the fine tuning of the wireless network. The following two slides will introduce this tool, including a couple of widgets that are are already available today to show channel distribution and channel utilization, which I referenced back to my Revolution 2 model that I presented earlier. My fellow solution architect, Jorge, will be presenting the G8 release of OmniVista Series 10.1 with much more detail in a separate session. OmniVista Series 10.1 is the first phase of this artificial intelligence driven tool to simplify monitoring and troubleshooting of a stellar wireless network through detailed QE measurements and Wi-Fi analytics and an easy-to-read dashboard display. OmniVista Series provides advanced data and analytics power by its cloud analytics engine that, it, that processes raw data and presents it in useful information for the various stakeholders 
to provide insights for a proactive service assurance methodology. QE encompasses many connectivity factors from successful connectivity attempts to time to connect, to roaming, to capacity for availability, airtime fairness, and among other key QE attributes, which will help influence the quality of the user experience while securely connecting and roaming on a stellar wireless network. Regarding the successful connects metrics, this functionally helps track failures during the Wi-Fi device association, authorization, and even through the DHCV phases. It also includes captive portal failures and successes as it authenticates through the network. All the fine-tuning recommendations reviewed through this session can serve as great training tools for Omnivus Azure Standard X. The evolution of this tool will provide self-provision decisions to fine-tune the network in the future. However, for today, we can help it by fine-tuning parameters based on the analytics and data collected from by Omnivus Azure and converted to information through its AI-driven cloud analytics engine to be presented in these usable widgets. For instance, in reference to the Revolution SSID's overhead capacity planning tool that I referenced earlier when dealing with a single channel overhead problem, Omnivista Series 10.x provides us with widgets to see the channel distribution under the Networks Analytics dashboard section. As shown here, this widget show the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequency bands with the channels that are being used within each frequency. If the QE scores are low, then the administrator can use this information combined with the channel utilization metrics to check and adjust to accomplish a fair distribution of the wireless communication among all the channels. As illustrated through this screen capture of my environment, all my clients are well distributed, utilizing 9.1% of each of the 5 GHz channels. In this scenario, channel 40 is being used by more clients than the other channels. And since this is a small network and based on the percentage used, the math works where channel 40 is being used by two clients, which gives us 18.2% of what you see here through the display. Again, this is just a small network in my demo room here in Calabasas to illustrate how the magic or the standard of stellar wires distributes and uses the balance of the available channels. It's no longer sufficient to offer quality of service for certain applications. Today, users and their smart devices require a first-rate quality of user experience from the time it takes to connect, which encompasses the network's DHCP options for access, authorization, and association phases, where each phase needs to be executed securely to obtain the desired QE, which is just the beginning to attain a successful experience while connecting to a wireless network. Through this fine-tuning recommendations, all stakeholders will have the positive wireless experience when their services are handled securely and with exceptional performance. These fine-tuning aspects should help maximize business productivity through Wi-Fi network visibility and insights for maximum optimum and optimal performance. QE encompasses many connectivity factors from successful connectivity attempts to time to connect, to roaming, to capacity availability, airtime fairness, and among other key QE attributes which help influence the quality of the user experience while securely connecting and roaming on the wireless network. A properly fine-tuned wireless network brings security enables QE across the organization. ALE's digital age network strategy through its network architecture process helps improve efficiency to help achieve an organization's competitive advantage. Thank you for your attention, and please take these techniques and apply them to your networks to deliver the best quality of user experience.